Sariel was a creator of delicate sculptures, but with the donning of her banshee war mask, she was now a howling killer. The urge to fight, to drop in amongst the lumbering orcs, was almost too great to resist. But Farseer Ksenia and Jane Zar's orders were clear. When the fallen eagle shines as gold, strike, kill. She and her fellow howling banshees, perched amid the velvet shadows of protruding roof beams in what had once been a human temple structure. A shattered rosette window, all but one of its coloured panes shattered, filled the end wall. A toppled altar to the human's wizened corpse god lay broken opposite the shattered window. A buckled effigy of their winged idol lay sprawled across it. The temple was grandiose by human standards, but little more than a hovel to one raised on the Eldar craft world of Bieltan. The soaring wraithbone towers and graceful palaces, wrought into being by the bone singers, were majestic and beautiful in a way that human structures could never be. The walls of the temple were fire blackened, its roof a little more than a shadowed ruin of jutting iron bars and twisted girders. A striated sky, like a watercolour left out in the rain, pressed down upon the city. That the temple was still standing at all was a miracle. The orcs of Warlord Scarblitz were stripping the abandoned city of every scrap of metal, timber and stone. This was one of the few structures that was yet to feel the fury of their scavenger mobs and hulking, demolishing machines. Sariel watched the greenskins with a haughty disdain, the purity and depth of which no race but Eldar could attain. They barged and roared and spat like beasts. One squatted to empty its bowels in the corner. Even from high in the rafters, the stench made Sariel want to gag. None of the orcs had seen the Eldar aspect warriors, even though a few had looked up to assay the structural members that once supported the roof. The orcs wore rough garb, fashioned from oil and mud-stained rags, over which scraps of hammered sheet metal plates were strapped to the broad, powerful bodies to serve as armour. Many had horned helms pressed onto their brutish, tusked skulls. A few sported mechanical arms or legs that hissed and wheezed, leaking oil and hydraulic fluid. It is a wonder to me that such uncouth, savage beings can function at all, whispered Drytha, shaking her head. Sariel looked up in surprise. Exarch Drytha, was not given to speaking in the moments before blood was to be shed. Sariel's squad leader was a warrior beyond compare, whose skill with her twin mirror swords was sublime. Sariel envied Drytha her slayer's prowess, but in her more introspective moments feared what the Exarch represented. At battle's end, Sariel would remove her war mask and return to her artistry without guilt for the lives she had ended, but Drytha's life had become wedded to the path of the warrior. The Exarch was doomed to be a killer until the end of her days. They are no better than club-wielding savages, continued Drytha. What cities do they build? What works of art do they create? Their legacy is naught but death and destruction writ large on the canvas of the stars. Their race serves no purpose. Their existence may serve no purpose, said Sariel. But that they can fight is in no doubt. Drytha's aspect helm turned to Sariel. Even though the Exarch's sculptural features, all angles and hard edges, were concealed, Sariel could picture her sneer. Fight, said Drytha. Their clumsy flailings cannot be called fighting. Sariel said nothing feeling the Exarch's aggression filling her with killing lust. To be near an Exarch was to feel the touch of death upon you, for they walked with it as their invisible companion. 
What must it be to stand in the presence of the reborn Jane Tsar? Since the Phoenix Lord's arrival through the damaged webway, the lust for war had dug its claws in deep with every warrior on Arcona. The other craft worlds had also sent their representatives, and the thought of fighting in the same host as a Phoenix Lord filled Sariel with pride. Her fingers curled into fists, and she filled her lungs with stale, metal-tasting air of the world. She heard the clanking rumbling of an orc vehicle nearby. Corrosive exhaust fumes billowed from beyond a far wall, and the heavy grinding of spiked tracks tearing up the roadway set the walls vibrating. Zariel swayed with the motion, her balance flawless. The cloud shifted, and shafts of dirty sunlight shone into the temple. Clouds of dust caught the light, glittering like gold dust in the air. On any other day but today, it would have been beautiful. A beam of sunlight shone through the last piece of coloured glass in the rosette window, and suddenly Sariel understood the Farseer's words. A shaft of golden light pierced the gloom, it struck the fallen effigy of the human's holy icon, and she saw it now for what it was, a winged eagle of polished steel and glass. It reflected the beam of light, and blazed with golden light, as though it was a flame. Its radiance filled the temple. Drytha saw it too, and drew her twin mirror swords with a hiss of razored edges. The blades glittered like wrought ice. The Exarch dived from the beam, arcing downwards like a hunting shrike. Sariel and the other howling banshees were in motion an instant later, every one of them screaming in battle fury. Sariel released the breath she had taken, giving form to her killing wrath and lust to wreak bloody murder through the psychosonic amplifiers of her aspect helm. Their screams shook the dust from the walls, it shattered the last pane of glass in the rosette window, hitting the orcs like a physical thing, an oral assault that battered their senses and left them reeling. Their howls were amplified in the confines of the temple, and the very walls began to crumble. Sariel somersaulted down into the midst of the orcs, drawing her shuriken pistol and bone-bladed sword the instant before she landed. Her blade sliced upwards, and the orc she selected as her first target stood dumbly as her pale sword cut through its neck. Iron-hard sinew and dense bone parted like molten glass before a shaping wire. It pleased Sariel that the blood jetting from the orc's body matched the vivid red of her helmet plume. The headless body took a swing at her, but Sariel was already in motion. She had her next target in her pistol sights. The orcs were reeling from the sonic assault, but the very crudity of their alien nervous systems was working in their favour. A human would be paralysed, convulsing and soiling himself as his body rebelled. The orcs, instead, shook off the wailing of the banshees as easily as Sariel might shake off a moment's surprise. Orc guns, more like portable cannonades than firearms, boomed with deafening roars. Acrid black propellant fogged the air. Heavy shot punched the stonework, and the revving of heavy chain-edge cleavers and axes belched filthy clouds of oil smoke. The banshees sliced through the orcs like a troop of dancers at play, swords moving too fast to see clearly, pistols firing razor-edged shuriken discs that sliced flesh and severed limbs. A banshee was the aspect of the elder war god in all its savagery. Harboringers of death and grief, even other Eldar feared the most vengeful of warrior aspects. Sariel fought with her fury and precise balance, using it, turning its passion into a weapon that drove her sword arm with greater strength, her pistol shots to heightened accuracy. To lose control of that fury would be dangerous, but she had trained for years in the aspect shrine to master it. For years her anger had threatened to consume her, but now it served her. 
She killed two more orcs without breaking stride, swaying aside from chugging cleavers and heavy mauls of welded steel and spikes. To Sariel, the orcs fought as though they were enveloped by some sluggish, viscous fluid. She saw their attacks coming far in advance, and was already evading to launch a counter-strike before the blow was even halfway complete. To Drytha, it must seem like the orcs were not in motion at all. The exarch spun and leapt, as though engaged in nothing more strenuous than a training session against those newly called to the Banshee Shrine. An orc armed with a heavy rotary cannon of rusted iron turned a crank on the boxy firing mechanism. A two-meter flame belched from the muzzle as a hail of shells exploded from the weapon. They stitched a path through the temple as the greenskin bellowed with coarse, guttural laughter. Drytha sprinted towards the orc gunner. She sprang at the air, pushing off the adjacent wall and spinning like an acrobat to land behind the grunting creature. Her mirror swords flashed, and the gunner found himself on his knees without knowing how. Sariel saw the orc's iron-shod feet standing on the cracked flagstones of the temple a meter behind it. Scissoring blows from the exarch's glitter-sheened blades took the orc's head, and it crashed forward with its clawed finger still curled around the trigger of its monstrous gun. Pressed to the ground, the weapon bucked and heaved, flipping the enormous bulk of the orc onto its side. Ricocheting shells flew through the temple at random. Most blew out brickwork from the walls. Some struck the orcs with satisfying explosions of green flesh. Sariel saw two of her sister banshees struck by the wild fire. An Eldar frame was nowhere near as robust as that of an orc, and the shells blew them apart. Sariel knew them both, Urint and Reira. Two lives ended that would never be replaced. Their loss would diminish Beltan and the Eldar race. When she removed her war mask, Sariel would mourn their passing in full. But for now, fury was all that ruled her. Barely a handful of the orcs still lived. Some, displaying a faculty of clear thought that surprised her, were fleeing through the splintered doors of the temple. Others, gripped by the mania common to the greenskin, remained to fight because fighting was all an orc ever cared about. Sariel felt the ground shake and heard the throaty bellow of the approaching orc vehicle in her bones. She stepped away from the wall as she saw its shadow drawing near. She heard stone split and crack under the tracks of something enormous. Fly, my banshees! cried Drytha, sprinting away from the source of the crushing, deafening noise. The banshees gathered up their dead as they left, as well as Urant and Reira. Two others had fallen. Inderia and Alarek. Drytha would not leave their bodies for the orcs to defile. Sariel ran up a pile of heaped bricks, fallen from the upper reaches of the temple, and vaulted onto the sill of a high lancet window. Daggers of glass still jutted from its splintered frame, but none touched her. She looked over her shoulder as the far wall exploded inwards. A hulking behemoth of patchwork metal roared inside, a vast tank with a crushing spiked roller welded to its frontal section. Heavy blocks of masonry were crushed beneath its clanking tracks and solid wheels as its bulk slammed down. Drytha and the Banshees were already gone, and watched the temple's destruction from the remains of a fallen hab block a hundred meters away. Varsia Kinesia was waiting for them, her long cream and rune-stitched robes blowing in the wind. The eye lenses of her antlered helm shone with eldritch light, and the wraithbone staff she carried writhed with psychic energies. You killed the orc with a great cannon, said Kinesia, but Sariel could not decide if her words were a statement or a question. I did, said Drytha. Good. The threads of our Kona's doom weave tighter, though what part the orcs have to play eludes me. You already know why they are here, 
said Dreyfer. You're just afraid to be right. Do not presume to imagine that the weave of the future can be known by unpicking the threads of the past, Dreyfer. The events that brought our people to this world have been in motion for longer than you can imagine, perhaps even longer than our race can comprehend. Sariel forced her gaze from the terrible power of the Farseer and the doom contained in her words. To be a Farseer was to be privy to the secret potentials of the future, and the power they wielded was not for simple warriors to know. She looked back at the temple as the orc vehicle rampaged through its ruined precincts. Two dozen greenskins rode atop its armoured cupola, or hung to its sides. They wore heavy pot helms and thick, round goggles. Each wore a long coat of black hide, stitched with the crude representation of a horned skull. The demolisher vehicle slewed around and smashed the altar and its glowing eagle beneath its tracks. The roller tore into the wall behind the altar, and it came down on the vehicle in a thunderous avalanche of debris. Even as it crushed many of their number, the orcs brayed with porcine laughter. Sariel watched with incomprehension. They kill themselves and they still laugh, she said. It is all they live for, said Knezia, and Sariel saw their glance at the exarch as she spoke. The fight is all that matters. The green skin has no grand strategic goals. No desperate fight to stave off species extinction. Then why fight at all? asked Sariel. Because it is all they know, said Knezia. It is all they care for nor that drives their savage culture. To fight is to live, and to live is to fight, said Drytha, turning and sheathing her glittering swords. And Sariel wasn't sure who the exarch was talking about. Hey guys, I just got done recording that little audiobook there about the Eldar and uh, with my favourite the guys we love to hate the Orcs our favourite enemy the funnest enemy the Orcs and uh, you may notice that I'm very hot right now not good recording weather but uh, I haven't shown you the hoodie yet that you'll know about if uh, you were on my Instagram and I may have posted it through on a Facebook as well but I don't know Anyway, I'll put it on for you now. I'll pause this. Here we are. Hey, here we are. Custom made Lawhammer Library merchandise. Just for me. So I actually got merch before any of you lot. Because I'm not making so many time soon. Don't have a big enough audience. Pretty cool though, right? So, subscribe!